up YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to show you some really cute, creative fall crafts, fall DIY decor items that you can make with any skill level and you probably have access to all of the supplies in your house right now. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is this grapevine pumpkin. You can quite honestly use any like bendy long stick. You're gonna need a glue gun and some scissors and some sort of like um, string or a zip tie and you'll see why here in a bit. Um, so you just are gonna create a bunch of little ringlets. I did mine about three times around like my four fingers and then just tack them um, together with some hot glue and I made, I don't know, 20 or so of these, like 15 to 20 of these, and um, make them all about the same size. You, you can make these as big or as small as you want, but make sure that you make them all the same size. Here I've got all of my rings completely made. I am bundling like three or four of them with a little piece of string, just kind of tacking them together just to make this next part a little bit easier. It would be really easy to use a zip tie for this process. Um, I just was too lazy to go get them. <laughs> I just used the string because it was right there beside me. Okay, and then once we have all of our little sections like tacked together, uh, you don't have to do that part either. You, you can just do it one at a time. It just makes it easier to manage. Um, and then I'm just going to put them all together like where I tacked them together and form our like pumpkin shape and see me tying here. I'm just kind of tying them as I go. So I've put like two or three bundles together and then tie them around the middle. See how a zip tie would be much easier, Tanya? I suggest zip ties. Um, <laughs> and, and it should be fine. You shouldn't be able to see it very well. If I mean, the jute string, you can't see it like at all, but I think a black zip tie would do well. Anyways, we've got our general pumpkin shape. I am putting a bunch of like hot glue on the top of this and then taking like some of those roots and some of those like uh, those little tendrils that come on like grapevines and pumpkin vines and stuff and just kind of putting them on the top. If you had some raffia or some like um, crafting moss or whatever, you can put that down in there or you don't have to do that step at all. And then um, the hot glue is to hold this stick. I literally just went and got a stick out of my yard, broke it down and created our stem, a little bit more hot glue for good measure. And then I just put a few more of that like rooty, ratty looking, I don't know, it's kind of like grassy looking stuff on the top just to make it more pumpkin-y. And then I'm going to take a bow just to kind of dress it up a little bit so it's not so just like, you know, stick. Um, even though it's cute by itself like that too. I was going to use that jute string um, and just make a bow like that, but I thought this would be super fun with this black and white checkered. Just hot glue it there. I'm super terrible at making bows, but this one was super simple and it turned out really adorable. It's going to look amazing in my fall decor. So something else that I like to do a lot is use little scrap pieces of wood. I never throw the pieces of wood away. <laughs> I like collect them all in a tote underneath our miter saw and Jake gets really frustrated at my pile of of uh, wood scraps, but we can use them for really cute things like all the time. So this next thing that we're gonna do is create some um, rusticy looking coasters and we're gonna use a Mod Podge transfer method and these have to like super duper dry. So we're gonna go ahead and stain these with some coffee cinnamon. I don't know if you guys can see this some coffee cinnamon mixture that I made up. Smells delicious, by the way. And um, the reason for that is if I were to stain these with regular stain, um, they would take a long time to like dry and be dry enough to handle them and dry enough to not like seep through our prints that we're gonna use. So even if you used like an acrylic paint and just watered it down to stain them, that would work too. So. Just something that will dry quick as traditional stain will absolutely just, I don't know, it's just real like 
oily and, and takes a while for it to be completely dried where that stain doesn't rub off on anything else. So first, let's stain these with our coffee mixture. We also have another project coming up that we're gonna use these little um, tags. And for the longest time, I would use the paint stirrer sticks that you can get at um, like Menards or, or any of the like box stores that sell paint or like tractor supply stores that sell paint. I would just use the paint stirrer sticks and like clip them down. You could clip them down just with regular scissors and then just drill a little hole in them to make these little cute tags. And you could use these tags for anything, but we'll get into that um, here in a little bit. But I'm, I'm also going to stain those right now, so you're going to see that in this next clip. Um, just know that that's for the project coming up after the coasters. So for this, you just take your spent coffee grounds and add some cinnamon. You could use just like watered down paint too for this if you wanted. And um, just just dye all of your pieces of wood. Some of this took really well and some of it didn't. I should have sanded these maybe um, so it would take this stain a little bit better. But I did not. And I also have these, they're faux wooden beads. I have a, a tutorial on our website at nightfallhomestead.com. Um, showing how to make these. These are actually made out of just flour and salt. I love the wooden bead accents and I use a lot of them. So I was just painting those here. Once you have them stained, you are going to paint these white or whatever color you want to paint them. Um, I'm rubbing off the coffee grounds and the cinnamon off of them because they are dry and my son Memphis is painting them white. Uh, if you trust your kids to do okay, then <laughs> then they can help. Memphis kind of messed up a few times, but it's okay. We are going to sand them down and rough them up anyways. So um, it was a good project for him to help with. And just make sure you get all of them done. And then we can move on to the next step. So for this next step, you are just going to need a printer. Um, and go pick out whatever image your little heart desires print it off or buy it from someone on Etsy. Do whatever you want to do to print them off. Make sure you print them so they are like mirrored, so they're like backwards to you when you're looking at them because we're gonna put them down and they will um, then transfer over to be um, legible from right to left. Anyways, take your images that you chose, cut them out to be the size of whatever um, scrap wood that you have and I decided to do like a coaster sort of um get up with this these will be like four coasters that I put out on one of the coffee tables or maybe in the kids rooms because they forever are putting their wet drinks all over everything anyways so you just put a generous amount of Mod Podge down and then you take your graphic and you rub it on there really really well and you just make sure that it's very adhered. Make sure you get plenty of Mod Podge. And ideally, you want to let these set overnight. But for video purposes, I just waited, I don't know, like four hours or so uh, before I started this next process. You're just going to need a little bit of water, a washcloth, or you can even use your fingers. Like, not very much water. You just want enough water to dampen the paper so you can, like, rub it off. Um, because Mod Podge is a water-based like seal. So if you get that Mod Podge like super duper wet, you're going to peel that Mod Podge up that has that ink that is like, mm -hmm. um, infused in it. You know what I mean? So the whole design will come up. You're probably going to have some spots that maybe do rub off a little bit more than others. Um, but as long as you're very like sparing with your water and just go slowly, <clears throat> then you're going to... Um, have a really nice print left afterwards so you can use a combination like if I feel like um, I'm rubbing too hard with my fingers or if um, I feel like it's too wet and I'll just take like the dry part of a towel and just kind of wipe it off you'll see here I kind of made some pencil marks to know where to put my little um, my little pieces of paper so I'm just trying to erase those off now you'll see that mine are not very like uh, dark around the edges like where I I like sanded and roughed them up around the edges but once I put a seal on this they will be very um, like rustic and a darker color around the corners 
So if you're going to use these for coasters, I would absolutely put a couple coats of uh, water-based polyurethane uh, over these. So when you are putting wet drinks on them, you're not like reactivating that Mod Podge and then mm -hmm. ruining your coasters. Uh, this one says, hello, mm -hmm. fall. I, since then, when I'm editing this video, have put the the uh, layer of seal on it, the water-based polyurethane, and that, you know, the coffee stain that I used at the beginning, that showed up really nicely. The wood grain around these prints showed up really nicely. And someday I'll get a better camera so you guys can see a little bit better <laughs> what I'm doing. And you see these, like, tags back here? That's the next project that we're going to do. It's literally the same thing. I'll just kind of go through. You guys get the idea. Use some sort of, like, scrap um, wood like or tags or some of those are Jenga pieces you guys can find like Jenga pieces or or a generic Jenga game and um yeah that's what we're gonna do next so here's the last one I kind of rubbed a little bit too hard on the word vibes so it kind of um pulled my ink up a little bit but it looks really nice that way like it looks like it's old and rustic and that's the way I want stuff to be I kind of tried to fill it in a little bit with a pencil um, which didn't work because there's Mod Podge on it, but it turned out really cute. Okay, so here's a couple pieces of the scrap wood. I, I slowed it down so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of dipping my finger in the little thing of water and just very gently rubbing over it. We want our Mod Podge to stay there. We're just lifting the paper up. So this is one of those Jenga pieces. I'm going to do this for all those little tags. You guys can use these for bowl fillers. You can use them um, as gift tags. You can use them if you have like a Thanksgiving or a fall tree or a wreath. I like to use them in tiered trays. Um, I just really like these. I don't know. Just put them in a little basket and just have them sitting there in a basket. They're really cute that way. But yeah, just peel up your paper. It just kind of like... Um, you know how you know how paper when it gets wet or like have you ever gotten paper stuck to your counter like you wipe your counter down and you set your mail down and then like a piece of paper sticks to it like the mail sticks to it the envelope it's just like that when you when you wash it off of your counter it just kind of like peels up like that it's super easy just be careful with this the black ink <laughs> can you guys hear my son he's playing xbox I don't know what he's playing, but it must be super fun. And he's 19. He's my most he's my most animated child, and he's like a million rooms away from me. So if you can hear him, I apologize. Uh, anyways, uh, the black ink definitely pops and shows up really nice, and it it 100% goes with the like grungy farmhousey country cottage um, decor feel that I like. It just is a really nice contrast against this, this white, um, paint that you have. You can absolutely seal these if you want when you're done. I'm not going to seal them. I see it and see how it rubbed off at the, at the E and the S at the back, uh, end of it. I don't know. I like it like that. It's just cute. All right, let's speed this up. I'll just show you guys a couple of more here. Maybe just this last one. This one says football. Um, turned out really, really cute. If you, uh, if, it, if you get it too wet, just use like a dry part of your towel or your washcloth and just kind of dry rub that paper off of there. Uh, I have lots of animals happening right here when I'm doing this, so I apologize. So this is what they look like when they're all done. We sell a lot of these around Christmas time with like personalized names on them, so it's really fun to do this fall twist on them. Okay, so this next project is maybe one of my favorite things. Make these like primitive little bowl fillers out of fabric. Oh my goodness, super easy and you can make so many things with these, but let's make this pumpkin. So you can take any piece of fabric. I like to just get scrap pieces of fabric. Um, I like to get solid colors like a white or a beige or you could get orange or black. You can use old t-shirts, you guys, any fabric, any fabric. Anyways, I'm just kind of drawing out a guide of what kind of pumpkin shape I want. And you want to draw it a little bit larger than what you want it to be. And you'll see why here in just a minute. Anyways, I'm just kind of rough draft penciling around this. None, none of these projects are meant to be perfect. They're all going to look imperfect. And that's what makes them super awesome to me. Like, I don't want... Uh, a nice sharp edged um, perfect decor or theme in my house. I just don't want that. Um, so when you're cutting out your 
um, shape. You could make a candy corn, you could make a pumpkin, you could make a witch's hat, you could make snowmen when it's closer to Christmas time. Um, I'm gonna cut about an inch around the the shape that I drew. So around my pencil mark, and please find some sharp scissors. We apparently do not own any sharp scissors. I had a really nice pair of Cricut scissors, but they are now dull. Um, so I'm riding the struggle bus here. <laughs> and I did not speed this part up, just, I don't know. I wanted you to watch it in real time. Okay, so I've got two pieces of fabric here. You can't see that in the video until I take them apart. I am plugging my glue gun in. You can use a glue gun for this, or they have something that's called, oh, what is it called? It's like bonding tape. It's it's basically like a glue in a strip that you are going to heat. You can use a, like a hair straightener or an iron, and, and it is essentially like glue. It's like dry glue that you are going to activate by warming it up, but... We like to use the hot glue gun for these projects because it's super easy and it's quick and pretty uh, pretty universal. Everybody has a glue gun or can have access to glue guns. You can get them at Dollar Tree and Dollar General, super duper cheap. They're even cheap at Walmart. Anyways, so take your glue gun and go on your pencil mark. You're going to make a line on your pencil mark. You kind of have to work quickly because that hot glue dries very, very fast. And I am leaving, I don't know, about an inch and a half space at the top where our stem will be for our pumpkin. And I am not gluing that part. And take your second piece of fabric and just push it down. You need this. This part is super important. I cannot stress this enough. Let that glue completely cool. And you want that glue to like bond in the fiber of those um, material pieces that you have, whatever material you're working with, you want that glue to really be in those fibers of your material. Okay, once your glue is completely dry, this space that we left that isn't glued, that is where we are going to flip this inside out and create kind of a pillow pouch. Remember how we, um, we left our material, like when we were cutting out our shape, we cut it really big. Um, I'm just cutting off that excess. You don't want to get super close to your, your glue line, but um, you also, you, you just want to, I don't know, probably a half an inch away from your glue line. So that way if any pieces come unglued when you're working with it, you can fix it really easy and you don't have kind of a weird wonky spot. So just cut off the excess. Here is what we're left with, just our inside out piece of fabric. And we're going to take that spot where we left it unglued and very gently flip it inside out. Kind of like we are um, taking a sock that's inside out and, and uh, making, it, making it correct. You just want to be gentle because you don't want to break your seal with your fabric and your glue that you have. Um, depending on what shape you make, it might be a little difficult. You might have to use like a, a pencil or something to kind of help get that fabric through there. We do candy canes in the winter time like this, and so sometimes we have to stuff a pen or a pencil down there, and it gets kind of tricky. Okay, so for this next step, you can add color to your fabric if you are working with like a beige or a white, um, or if you already have a piece of orange fabric and you don't want to add any color to it, it's totally fine. I just like to add just a little pop of color. Um, it's so hard to explain, you guys. I just love the primitive, like, grungy, uh, grubby-looking stuff. The old, I don't know, the primitive decor stuff. Here, let me get my camera figured out. Okay, so um, I'm adding just a little bit of paint here, and then I'm also gonna use that coffee cinnamon water mixture to darken this up, um, the same one that we used on, on these coasters and stuff up here. paint for this whole thing if you wanted to I would just suggest like watering it down I mean I don't know just 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 it's such an easy craft and even if you messed it up it's not like oh my god I messed this up it's gonna it cost me so much money to get all these supplies like no it didn't no it didn't go get yourself some an old, old t-shirt at a thrift store for 25 cents and, and don't throw away those shirts that your kids have outgrown uh, I save so many shirts and scarves and stuff like that because I use them in my crafting stuff we're gonna make some really amazing fall stuff 
stuff using some old t-shirts in our next fall series video. Uh, that will be next week. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you can see what else we're going to do with just stuff that you're going to either throw away or can access super easy or super cheap. Anyways, um, yeah, just, just paint this however you want to paint it. Uh, take as much time or as little time as you want. You don't have to paint it at all. It would still be really cute, just plain old fabric. And um, then you're just gonna hang it up to dry and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, after your paint has dried, then you're gonna stuff your little, your little pumpkin pillow or whatever shape you decided to do. Um, I'm using cotton balls. You can use more of the material that you're using. You can use um, paper towels. You could use toilet paper. You could use um, literally anything. I just, the only tip I have about this is do not stuff it and then paint it because the stuffing inside of there is going to get wet if you paint it after you've stuffed it. And then, you know, then we're looking at like mold and mildew and, and you don't want to do that. So make sure that your little pillow is completely dry before you start stuffing it. And we're just going with cotton balls here. Okay. So we have all of our stuffing about in there. And remember that stick that we used earlier for our stick pumpkin, um, our grape vine wreath pumpkin? We just used another piece of that stick. And this is where that opening is going to be sealed shut with this, um, with this little stem that we're making. So we're just going to take our hot glue gun and put it you know, fill in the little seam area, the little empty space with the hot glue and just press it shut until it seals. Ta -da! It's very hot. Glue, glue is very hot. I feel like I should put a disclaimer in all of my videos. Like if you are a kid making these projects, don't burn yourself and maybe ask a, an adult for help and just be very careful. Glue guns get very hot. I've blistered my fingers many a times. And then for just a final touch, you can put a bow, you could put some beads, you could leave it just plain. I'm just taking a little piece of jute string and just kind of securing it with um, the hot glue just so it doesn't, I'm not really like tying it in a knot so it wasn't going to like stay, stay. And, and then we have this really cute pumpkin. These things are for sure my favorite for tiered trays and bowl fillers and just little things to put in baskets on the coffee tables and whatever. Those are definitely my favorite. Isn't it super cute? Okay, next thing. So this next thing is just like your your possibilities are completely unlimited with what you can do here. So you're just gonna search up on Pinterest or Google um, whatever picture you want it to be. I just put like vintage fall or something like that in and ended up finding this little cute design here. And this one is quite simple. Just take a piece of scrap wood, rough it up, paint it however you want, and then you're literally just gonna glue this piece of paper on there, and then you can add glue on top. Just make sure that between the gluing, you let it dry completely so you don't have any bubbles or anything. All of our stuff turned out super duper adorable. These make great gifts. These are super fun to do. They are very cheap and free. Um, I, I just think that everybody can absolutely do all of these crafts that we did today and have some really nice decor for your home on a really teeny tiny budget. You guys, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. I will be showing you how to make all kinds of really amazing fall decor in our next upcoming videos. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.